Neil Battaglia, SaxStation.com. Basically, the universal speed limit is going to be the speed of light. So if you're transmitting something across the internet, it's literally not going to be able to go faster than the speed of light, which is about 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So the speed of light is very, very much faster than the speed of sound. If we pretended that we could transmit music at the speed of light through the internet, for example, from LA to New York, that's about 4,500 kilometers if you drive, and it's probably more about 4,000 kilometers if you went a straight shot. So literally there isn't a straight shot, but let's pretend there was that. Let's say there was a direct line that went from LA to New York at the speed of light. If that happened, it would take about 13 milliseconds for light to travel from LA to New York. If music could travel at the speed of light from LA to New York, that means it would have a latency of 13 milliseconds. But the audio interface is gonna have some latency. And basically there's kind of intermediate steps in the transmission. Before I started to focus on saxophone and music, I actually studied physics in school. So I got a bachelor's degree in physics and then a master's degree in applied physics. I worked in a laboratory for a little while and I taught a physics course at a junior college near where I live. More realistically, using the actual internet, there's gonna be about 137 milliseconds of latency between Los Angeles and New York. In this video, I'm gonna talk about four different ways to play music with people online and what I think about them. I've actually tried three of them and the fourth one, I started to get the files for it in the program, but I ended up kind of abandoning that because it seemed like it'd just be a little bit too complicated and it would require kind of some technological savvy on both ends. So on my end and with the people that I'm playing with. So the first program that I used to teach people online, and this is starting a while back, and this is when there weren't that many options, was actually Skype. It works pretty well, but it also depends on your internet connection. If you have Wi-Fi, it depends on your router, how far you are away. Basically, an Ethernet cable in general is probably what you want to use to get the best connection. And that's going to be with any of these programs that I'm talking about. So with Skype, it works all right. I think sometimes my Internet connection wasn't great, so I started kind of going closer to the Wi-Fi router in my house. And I think Skype isn't bad, but it's not really designed to play music with people. So it works OK, but there's delay. It's not necessarily going to be the best tool. What I think is a little bit better than that is Zoom. So I've been using Zoom for lessons within the last few months, and I think it works decently. It is fairly difficult to actually play in time with each other, so it's going to be kind of hard to do something like duets. You can kind of work around that by turning down the volume of one person and just listening and then playing along, and both people kind of having faith that the other person is playing in time. So that can work okay, but it's maybe not ideal. So I think Zoom works decent if you're maybe doing lessons and one person plays, the other person plays, you can hear each other, but it's kind of hard to line things up. After doing some lessons with Zoom, I heard about this thing called Jack Trip. And actually it was from a video that Victor Wooden posted and he had Christian McBride talking about this technology. And Jack Trip allows people to play together in real time. It actually sounds like that might be the best option if you understand technology very well or you have someone who can help you with it to a fairly significant degree. To use Jack Trip, though, you have to use the terminal. So that means like typing out lines of code. So that might be kind of intimidating for some people. I kind of didn't necessarily want to get into it and also have to explain it to anyone that I was talking to and wanted to use this with. It kind of works by having three different points. So basically, the let's say it's two musicians playing together. They basically send their signal to the third place, and then it comes back to both of them, and it's able to kind of sync up in a way that works pretty well. If you know a lot about technology and you feel that you're up to it, Jack Trip might be a good option. It's probably not the best option for most people because it is kind of a higher learning curve than the other things. With like Skype and Zoom, you just kind of start them and go. What I've actually been using to rehearse with a band that I'm in is something called Jam Kazam. And Jam Kazam is a little bit harder to use than Zoom or Skype, but I think the trade-off is that it's going to work significantly better. It's designed for musicians to play together. Zoom and Skype are not really designed for musicians. They're both good tools, but they're not designed for musicians. So a Jam Kazam basically is going to work the best if everyone has microphones and everyone has headphones. So these are the headphones that I use for Jam Kazam, and then I plug in this microphone, which has a USB connection to my computer. I'm going to maybe try out an audio interface on another microphone, but I haven't done that yet. So I've just been using this one. It's a condenser mic, and it has the USB connection.
what happens with Jamkazam is you sign up for an account on their website and they developed this technology, I think in 2014, that's when they were saying it was new in a video that I saw. So basically six years ago, they came up with this technology and I think it was a pretty cool concept, but at that point and for the next few years, it ended up not being all that popular just because I think in general, it's going to be ideal to be in the same room as the musicians you're playing with. What Jamkazam allows you to do is maybe you're far away from each other maybe it's like an hour or two drive, something like that, then maybe you can still kind of rehearse together and it's going to be better than not rehearsing and the technology is designed for musicians to play together. So with Jam Kazam, you've got some latency based on just the equipment you're using. So signals going through cords, going like from your computer to the router. So with the audio interface, in my case, this microphone, it introduces some latency itself. So I think that's about 10 milliseconds. And 10 milliseconds, is that good or bad? Basically how you can think about that, I read an article and it was saying that anything below 25 milliseconds in latency is actually difficult to detect with your ears. Imagine that you're in a cave and you shout and you hear an echo. Basically there's a delay in the echo. So sound travels at about 440 meters per second, and that's a room temperature about 68 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius. With the echo in a cave or against any like kind of wall or object that's far away and it comes back, you can hear the delay in it. So you can think about what distance that might be. In general, if you're in a room with musicians, you're not gonna be far enough away so sound travels pretty fast. I would say in general, when you're rehearsing with musicians, you're not gonna be farther than about 30 feet or about 10 meters from each other. I actually did a little calculation. It's gonna probably be barely noticeable, maybe noticeable to some people, not to everyone. And you can probably remember that if you've been to a large concert, they don't usually have one set of speakers. If it's like a large arena or something like that, they're gonna have kind of speakers in different places. They're doing that to kind of reduce the latency that you hear the music at. You don't really want a long delay. Like imagine you're in a football arena. If there's a band playing in the center of the field and you're kind of farther away, there could be a noticeable latency just in the distance between the music and where you are listening to it. And to kind of make up for that, a lot of times if you're in a big place like that, they're going to have multiple sets of speakers and some of the speakers are going to be closer to you than the musicians themselves are. What that basically means is that using something like Jamkazam is going to be far more effective if you're playing with someone not too far away from you. Somewhere I was hearing a number that it's, you probably want to be within about 500 miles of each other and it's going to be more effective. And the closer you are, the less you have to worry about that factor of distance. If you have something that's like an electromagnetic signal, like a radio wave traveling through the air, then that could potentially go faster. With something like that, there's going to be delay because of the steps along the way. It actually takes the light from the sun about eight minutes to go from the sun to the earth. So that's an eight minute latency, basically. The farthest that I've traveled away from California is actually to Sri Lanka. And to get to Sri Lanka, it wasn't a direct flight from California to Sri Lanka but let's say that you could do a direct flight from California to Sri Lanka. It'd be about 14,600 kilometers. Let's pretend that we have a device that can send music at the speed of light to any place in the world. So using the direct path from California to Sri Lanka, that would translate to about 48.7 milliseconds of latency. There's one fairly simple equation that's connected to all of this. And you can probably maybe even think of it in a sign that you see pretty often, which is the speed limit. With a speed limit, a lot of times you see miles per hour or kilometers per hour. So basically that's distance divided by time. So velocity is equal to distance divided by time. If you rearrange that, you can solve for the time if you have the distance and the velocity. So basically you divide the distance by the velocity to get the time. So that's what I'm using to do a few different calculations. With Jamkazam, I tried it out just using wireless and it was with the bass player and the Rudians. And basically I kind of got a feel for the interface, what I had to connect and do with different things. Headphones are pretty important because if you don't have headphones, basically you're getting a signal from them. It's going into your microphone. It's going back to them. It's coming back to you. There's this kind of loop that kind of messes with the sound. It kind of just degrades the overall experience. So if you want a good experience with Jamkazam, use headphones and you probably want to use a microphone as well. It's not gonna to work too well with the built-in microphone, the built-in speakers on a computer. With Jamkazam, you do need a computer. So it's not something that works on a phone or a tablet. 
More recently, with the whole situation that's going on, Jam Kazam has had more interest than it had when it first came out, basically because I think it's more of an important tool for people in general than it used to be. I think it was useful before, but maybe it wasn't as necessary for as many musicians as it could be at this point, if you know about it and want to try it out. So with Jam Kazam, I tried it out using the wireless. It kind of worked. It had a little bit higher latency than would have been ideal. What I ended up doing was I got a pretty long ethernet cable and I got it to my computer. And at that point, I was actually able to do a rehearsal with the Rudians. It took a little bit of work to figure out the configuration on their end because basically there's a soundboard there and they connected the soundboard to the interface within Jam Kazam. On my end, I was just using headphones in this microphone, so it wasn't too complicated. So depending on what you're doing, if you have a soundboard or not, you may need to kind of figure out how to make those things work together. Basically, we kind of messed around with it for a little while. I was hoping that just like one microphone on their end would kind of pick up everything and it wouldn't be ideal, but it might work. What they ended up doing was connecting the soundboard so that kind of worked a little bit better. Kind of depending on the equipment, it will work better or worse. I would say the minimum that you need are like headphones and microphone. Then yesterday, actually, I tried out Jam Kazam with my friend. He was using wireless. I was using an ethernet cable. I actually kind of messed with it. I unplugged the ethernet cable at one point and that kind of confused the program. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. <laughs> Just use the ethernet cable if you can. What we saw is that Jam Kazam gives you some numbers for the latency due to the interface, due to the connection. So you'll see like green and yellow and red, depending on how good it is and how well it's gonna probably work. What you probably want for Jam Kazam is an ethernet cable, microphones, and headphones with everyone who's involved. Those are probably gonna give you a pretty good connection. And when I was using that for the rehearsal, it actually worked pretty well. I think there's about 10 to 20 milliseconds of latency for the rehearsal when I was using headphones, an ethernet cable, and a microphone, and they're using a soundboard, an ethernet cable. So I'd say that if you wanna try and rehearse with people, if you really know technology well, and you want to kind of mess with the terminal command lines and everything, you could try out Jack Trip. If you're not quite as good with all of that and you don't want to deal or and or you don't want to deal with it, then I think Jam Kazam is a pretty good option. I'm happy that there's a renewed interest in Jam Kazam because that means they're going to probably update things and make it better. There's a funding page available for Jam Kazam if you want to support the project because I think it is important for musicians at this point and it could be something that's pretty useful for you right now. Overall, I don't think that Jam Kazam is too difficult to set up or use, but it does involve a few steps. And you do need a few pieces of equipment, which are not technically required, but basically to get a good experience, they are. So the Ethernet cable, the microphone, and the headphones. I think that theoretically Jam Kazam also might be good for music lessons. It would require a little bit higher level of setup and equipment, though. Those are my initial impressions of Jam Kazam. So I'd say that if you want to get a better experience, Jam Kazam is probably a good option. If you want something that's easier to set up, you might want to just use Zoom. If you're really into technology and are good at programming, you might want to try out Jack Trip. I have lessons and classes available on Saxation.com. Let me know if you have questions about Jam Kazam or anything else I've mentioned in this video. I figured I'd make this video and see if there are follow-up questions and interests in the topic. Thank you. 